I'm Dee Mangan from McMaster University, and we need to talk about drugs. This is not the drug problem that you've been reading about in the media, but it is an equally big drug problem that probably represents the biggest opportunity to improve medical care in older age in the next 30 years in Canada. Meet Anne. Anne's 85, and she's had a fall at home, and you can see her medications on the right-hand side of the screen. This scenario will be very familiar to you. If you're over 65 in Canada on one medication, you're likely on seven. So you, or your mother, or your father, has multiple pills to take at multiple times of the day. And a blister pack might be used to try and reduce the confusion and keep things on track. So where's the problem in this? If you need the pills, surely you need the pills. Well, it's a little bit like music. If we listen to a little bark. Some Miles Davis. Canadian. The four tops. Maybe. Some Bruce Springsteen. On their own, they sound wonderful. And they do us good. They make us feel better. But what happens if we play them all together? together they become a cacophony and this is what taking multiple medicines is like for patients as they get older. How does this happen? It's because our system of care has been developed to look at single diseases in isolation and this has been very successful in enabling us to live a healthy old age. But if we take a 70 year old woman and give her the five conditions that an average 70 year old woman might have and it doesn't matter which ones you choose and we take the guidelines for each of these single diseases and apply them this is what happens. The most important part of this is not just the cacophony, but the 16 different possibilities for interactions between drugs and other drugs, or drugs and other diseases. So you can see that what looks like good care, if you look at this person as a collection of their single diseases, is actually meaningfully worse care for this individual. This is compounded by the fact that as we age, we're much more vulnerable to the side effects of drugs and the benefits often diminish or even disappear. We now know that more people get admitted to hospital from low blood sugar from the drugs used to treat diabetes than from high blood sugar. And if you're on, a, on a, an agent for blood pressure, you're much more likely than your neighbor who's not to be admitted with a serious injury from a fall. Like tidying up music into its component parts. This is what happens when we tidy up patients into their component diseases or drugs. We lost, lose the meaning and context that makes it impossible to hear the melodies of the person's life and understand the effect of the illnesses and the drugs. And it's a big problem. In Canada, one in 10 people on five or more medicines have a drug side effect that leads them to need medical care. More people die of adverse drug effects in Europe each year alone than die of prostate cancer or colon cancer or breast cancer, yet we screen for these things. It's the equivalent of two jumbo jets full of people crashing every day and killing everybody on board. If this was an airline, would you fly in it? But patients do every day. But this cause of death and illness that's so common is largely lo lost in our focus on single diseases. We know that polypharmacy has a huge effect. Polypharmacy means taking five or more medicines. And this has a huge effect on mobility. You can see here that it, it increases your risk of falls. It interferes with balance and strength. It gives thinking and memory problems, sleep and fatigue. 
So somebody said it makes you dizzier, drowsier, and dulls your thinking. And these things you can see have a huge impact on our mobility in our homes and also our ability to be mobile in the community. You can see that it really increases the risk of that dreaded social isolation. We know that people on particular medicines have increased risk of car accidents. We know it interferes with driving when you're on multiple medicines. And we went and we asked patients about what were the barriers to addressing this issue. And patients said, well, we'd like to taste, med take less medication. We think you doctors prescribe too much medication. And we think taking, stopping pills now and then is a good idea, a drug holiday. But we're a bit nervous about raising it in the conversation because we worry about what you'll think if we do. And we worry that if we trial stopping, we won't be allowed to restart. And then we went to doctors and we asked them what were the barriers. And they said, well, we worry about giving the wrong impression by starting this conversation. And we worry about not following the single disease guidelines. And we worry particularly because we don't have a system or guidelines to support this. So, this is our vision of our research project here at McMaster, TAPER, a team approach to polypharmacy reduction. And our dream is that this is part of routine care for older adults, just like flu shots or pap smears in younger, younger adults. We've created a program that first of all centres around the patient, not the diseases. The first thing we do is say, what matters to you? What are the symptoms that are important to you? And what are the things that you'd like to do that your health stops you from doing? And do you think you're having any problems with your drugs? And then we've created an evidence-based computer software program that looks across all the diseases, just like our 70-year-old, and flags the problems that might be an issue for you as an individual. And we put this together to prioritise a plan for your drug holiday, for pausing some of these drugs, observing what happens, and for monitoring and following up. And we're really excited about what we've seen so far. We've seen people who have been so confused that they needed family members to consent to treatment, transformed within weeks to be able to give their own consent. We've seen people who have been falling and dizzy um, have that vanish within two weeks of starting their taper. So we're excited and we hope that you can see what we're excited about. Thanks to the Walrus for allowing these seven minutes to, for you to glimpse what we think is not a problem, but a huge opportunity to transform medical care, to achieve really what the goal of medical care is, to support Canadians to live their best life, a life worth living on our own terms. Thank you. <laughs>